How's it going, everyone? ND Sean 45 coming at you. Now, before I get to my preview for this Saturday's game between Notre Dame and North Carolina, I have a few shout outs that I want to take the time to give. The first one is in regards to my affiliation website, Notre Dame in the end zone dot com. Now, you see, uh, not only do we have the website itself, but we have a Facebook page that uh, helps us promote the website, and I'm the one who runs it. Um, but uh, for the last week and a half or so, give or take, we've had a lot of people stop by the Facebook page and give us a little love by giving us a lot of likes. And uh, to all those people, if you're watching, and I know some of you will because I'm going to post this video on the, the Facebook site, I just want to take this time to say on behalf of all of us at Notre Dame in the End Zone, thank you for stopping by and giving us a little love. It's highly appreciated. Um, we could use all the support that we can get. Um, you know, and if you guys like the Facebook page, uh, we invite you to come to the actual website itself at www.notredameintheendzone.com. It's completely 100% free to join, so please come sign up uh, and join in, in on the conversation. Um, you know, we've been trying really hard for the past couple of years to get this website off the ground, and uh, we've had a few setbacks with it, you know, a uh, uh, change in... Uh, in administrators and uh, some technical issues with the well, the web designers and all that, but still, the more Irish fans that we can get on there joining in on the conversation, the better. So, but uh, anyway, like I said, I just uh, being the one who runs the Facebook page, I didn't want you guys to think that we don't notice stuff like that because of course we do, and it is highly appreciated. So again, thank you, and if you like the Facebook page, please come to the website and um, join in on the conversation. Also, the second shout out that I would like to give is to my high school alma mater back home in Geneseo, Illinois. Geneseo High School, the Maple Leafs, commonly known as the Green Machine. This past Friday night with their 13 to nothing victory over Yorkville High School, not only did they go 6-0 and on their season and clinch a spot in the 4A state, tie, uh, state playoffs, um, they secured the 52nd consecutive winning season in Geneseo football history. And I just want to take this time to say to those to Coach Johnson, Coach Dierix, uh, Coach Johnson Sr., and the rest of the coaching staff and the players con from, from one alumni to a new generation, congratulations, boys. You know, Coach Johnson, you have those boys playing well, and, um, you know, I, I was fortunate enough to have been a part of uh, two of those teams. I mean, you know, 52 consecutive winning seasons, that is impressive. No matter what state it is, no matter what level, that's impressive. You know, I was, uh, like I just said, I was there in uh, the 02 and 03 seasons, and, you know, it was, very, it was a real honor to be a part of it. Um, you know, I wasn't... Uh, I wasn't that great of a football player. As a matter of fact, I sucked. But it was still a great time for me. I played with a great group of guys and a lot of great memories. And it just, again, I can't say it enough. I was, I'm really honored to be a part of uh, the Geneseo Green Machine football tradition. And you know, uh, to any players who happen to catch this video, again, I don't know how far this video is going to get out. I will post this on the. Geneseo Facebook page, but to any players in this on this current team who happen to be watching, you know, like I said, from uh, from a Geneseo alumni to your current generation, uh, you guys have been playing well all season long. Uh, just uh, keep working hard, keep playing hard, and if you keep doing that, there is nothing that says that you guys can't run the table and bring home another state title to Geneseo. So keep up the good work, boys. Oh, and by the way, Coach Dierix, if you happen to catch this, I just want to take this time to say welcome home. Uh, so with that said, guys, uh, go Green Machine. So, all right, after about, let's see the clock on my webcam. After about four minutes of uh, giving shout-outs, I think it's probably about time that I get to the actual preview for this week's game. What do you think? <laughs> all right, well, anyway, this weekend, as previously mentioned, Notre Dame hosts the North Carolina Tar Heels. Now, the last time these two teams got together, it was in 2008 at Chapel Hill. And myself, personally, it's another day that I would prefer to forget because that day, in my opinion, I feel the Irish let one slip away that they shouldn't have. But you know what? The past is the past, only the future to look forward to. 
Now, now I'm telling all of you guys this. North Carolina's 2-3 and three record means absolutely nothing to me, okay? This game has all the signs of a good old-fashioned trap game. And whether, you're, whether it's the players or just us fans, nobody should be looking past this Saturday into next week, okay? Because um, that's, as we've learned from the past, that's what gets us in trouble every single time is overlooking opponents. We can't do that with North Carolina. Now, simply breaking the Tar Heels down, uh, a very explosive offense, but a defense that has struggled quite a bit this season. Um, their offense is led by quarterback Marquise Williams, uh, another dual-threat quarterback, and he's very talented. And also, for a special mention, uh, the, no, the Tar Heels running back core features former Notre Dame recruit Elijah Hood. Now, I'm not bringing up his name to, you know, start crap or you know, talk trash on him, uh, but I'd be lying if I said it, it didn't suck to lose him to North Carolina, but, you know, whatever, he had reasons for going, you know, going back to, going to North Carolina, staying home with his family and all that, uh, so, but we'll see a little bit of him in the game on Saturday for sure, um, but very simply put, guys, uh, keys to victory for Notre Dame in this one, and you guys all know what number one is going to be. Protect the football and no turnovers. Now, I didn't want to say this in the recap from the Stanford game because it was a huge victory. It was a lot of fun. It was just a, it became an instant classic moment for Notre Dame football. You know, so why why ruin that moment with, and all that celebration with negativity? But you know what? The celebration's over. It's time to get back to business. Okay. Mistakes almost cost us that one against Stanford. Um, and it wasn't just Everett Golson. It, you know, we had trouble uh, on field goal attempts and, um, you know, uh, several different aspects of the game. But we made some mistakes that uh, gave points away to Stanford, and we made some mistakes that kept points off the board for ourselves. So we cannot keep this trend going on. If we keep this trend going on, it's only going to get us in trouble, and it's going to cost us a chance at a – the kind of season that we think we can have, you know, making a run at a championship in the playoffs, you know. So get have to protect the football, you know. Just wrap it up if you have to. Do whatever you can. Treat it like a newborn child. That's the best way I can describe it. But this trend has got to change. The second key to victory is um, our, our defense, that Notre Dame defense. Now, there's no doubt that Brian Van Gorder has had these boys playing well every single week so far, and I'm – I'm impressed. I'm starting to like it. I'm becoming a believer with our defense and in Brian Van Gorder. But second key to victory is our defense has got to shut down Marquise Williams. As I said already, he's a dual threat quarterback, and he's going to be a test for our defense, no doubt. So we got to find a way to shut him down, keep him off balance, and force him to make mistakes. Um, and the third key to victory is actually two things in one. Our offensive line and our running game. The offensive line, and I've been saying this for weeks now, that we have got to get that running game going. Well, it's no different this time around, but it all starts with that offensive line. You know, Brian Kelly and uh, Harry Heastand, um, they've been shuffling around the offensive line for the last couple weeks now. Whatever combination they have going this week, you know, those guys have got to step up and open the holes. And against a defense like North Carolina's, which is – been struggling all season long, there's no excuse why we shouldn't be able to do that this week and, you know, get guys like Greg Bryant, Torian Folson, and Cam McDaniel going. I mean, there's no excuse for it. Just got to open the holes, get that running game going. So offensive line, step up. So with that said, guys, um, with every, with all of that taken into account, uh, this my final score prediction for this one, of course, I think Notre Dame is going to win. I would have said so even if I was just a, an unbiased fan on the outside looking in. But my final score prediction for this game, Notre Dame 34, North Carolina 14. The Irish move to 6-0 on the season, and then after that we can start focusing ahead to our matchup in Tallahassee. But got to play efficient this week first to be able to focus on that. So with that said, everyone, this is N.D. Sean 45 signing off. Thanks again to everybody who gave us some love at Notre Dame in the end zone .com on the Facebook page. Go Maple Leafs. And of course, as always, go Irish, baby. Beat the Tar Heels.